it will go. What is up everybody you're very welcome along to tonight's late night agenda I am delighted to say that I'm joined from Claude and Diesel from Google Claude TV and Claude and the Bansers on Facebook on Instagram and excited to say and most importantly in my humble opinion now on hot mic as well Claude let's start with you sir how are you Oh um, <laughs> evening everyone evening all you uh, Liverpool fans out there and um well, it's nice to thanks for inviting me on, mate, and um, it's a pleasure to be on here, mate. Oh, I'm really excited about having a chat with both of you guys. I've been on your channel already a couple of times, and Diesel, how are you keeping, fella? Yeah, Craig, oh, yeah, mate, all good, thanks. Uh, really appreciate you um, uh, inviting me and Claude on. Um, hello to everybody in the chat room watching, all you lovely Liverpool fans out there, uh, maybe hopefully one or two Arsenal fans on here. But yeah, to everyone, hope you're all well and looking forward to it. We are, of course, folks, live on both YouTube and on Hot Mic. And as always, we do ask you guys to download that Hot Mic app, put in the code Anfield when you when you open up the app and you're prompted to do so. Give us a follow. But then, of course, make sure that you go over and give Claude and the Bansters a follow. And Claude, what can I say? welcome to the Hot Mic family, mate. Yeah, thanks a lot, mate. And. Uh... Um, uh, it's the first time on here, and um, I've, I've heard a lot. Uh, I've been watching you lately, and um, you do a great broadcast, and you do brilliant work on the Anfield agenda. And I'm praying because I think your great club deserve to finish this football season because they've been absolutely magnificent this season. And my player of the season, I don't know how he's Liverpool fan, and I think is is uh, Jordan Henderson. I think he's been absolutely outstanding. You, you, as always, sir, you're a true gent. And to me, look, my, my heart would say Jordan Henderson, but if I was pushing the button, I'd probably go with uh, with Sadio Mane. And, and Diesel, I know we chatted about this when we were over on, yeah. on your channel as well. Mate, who would give your vote or who would you cast your vote for player of the season? Yeah, do you know what? I, 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 I did think a lot about Jordan Henderson, right? But I think if I had to pick... I, th I think the player who just edges him, because I really like him, I think it's uh, Gigi Wijnaldum. Um, I think Wijnaldum and Henderson are two two of the most underrated players in this league, right? And as much as we get excited about watching Mane, who is class in my opinion, you know, and Salah and uh, Firmino, who, by the way, is another underrated player... Um, Yes, the goals, the glitz, the glamour, you know, we can rave about those players all day long. But what we don't really rave about, in my opinion, uh, are the likes of Henderson and Wijnaldum, Craig. You know, the what I like to call, for lack of a better term, the water carriers. You know, the, the, you know, the, the two players in the middle of that park who make you guys tick. Take those two out of your team. Um, it's it's a lot weaker in my opinion you know the, the the amount of ground they cover the work they get through unsung heroes in my opinion oh, i agree i absolutely love both both players mentioned mm. it look there has been some light at the end of the tunnel so i want to just read out something that i've seen today the uk government has come out and given the green light for sporting events to start back behind closed doors from june the first with the caveat of course that there's sufficient progress made curtailing the virus now it seems as though the premier league has asked the government to reconsider the use of neutral venues the premier league chief executive richard masters has said everybody would prefer to play at home and away at all possible it's clear that some clubs feel more strongly about that than others we're in contact with the authorities and listening to the advice while also representing clubs views in those discussions he also said in a strongly a strong collective will come to complete the season uh, but admit a curtailment was included in the talks today for the first time. And another quote from the chief executive said that there is a strong desire to discuss everything in the round and agree a collective way forward. Now, Claude, for you, sir, what do you think is going to happen and what do you think is the best way forward in your opinion? think we may have lost Claude for a second I think sorry uh, the connection really is poor tonight sorry mate hey it's alright so, buddy yeah. 
I was just asking yeah, what um, you think the best way forward is now after the Premier League statement today and, and the government saying that from June the 1st we can start to look at sporting events behind closed doors. Ooh. See, I think there's a... It's behind closed doors, yeah, and apparently it, the, what, what I've done is the neutral venues as well. And the, what what's going to happen is now that a lot of these clubs in the relegation area, like... Uh, they have to get an agreement from at least 14 of the uh, 20 clubs. Uh, but there are a lot around that relegation area that are saying, that, uh, thinking that they're, they're losing their home advantage through all this. And uh, I think a lot of them are, putting this, uh, are trying to say, well, if you want to do this, you have to um, play the season out, but with no relegation. There's going to be a lot of to and throwing on this one. Um there's no fair way of doing this, is there, really? But um, I don't know about you, boys, but uh, we're just behind a closed door, uh, behind closed doors. See, what I, what I don't what I don't know, I mean, let, forget about the top half of the table. Let's look at teams like Villa now, fighting for their lives. They're, 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 they're a big advantage to play in their games. It's playing in front of their home ground, their home fans. And they're losing that advantage because now everything is going neutral. It's a difficult one. I, I don't know how this is going to get solved, but um, whatever happens, there's going to be, there's no, uh, someone's going to be moaning about it. Yeah, for sure. D- Diesel, we did hear that the Premier League have an appetite, mate, to try and get the government to give them the nod to allow the games to be played at clubs grounds as per normal, but we're still waiting to hear whether they, they get to go ahead for that from the government or not. Yeah, I think I think what they I think what we're looking to do, Craig, I think is obviously as we all know, you know, the, the Bundesliga is starting shortly and I think I think they're gonna be watching to see how it works over there. Um and they're going to be watching that league like a hawk, you know. What they, what I don't agree with, and uh, funnily enough, we just covered this in um, um, our stream earlier on in our channel. I've said, I did. No one misses football more than me, you know, and um, I do miss it. However, the only thing that doesn't sit right with me is is the fact that when I'm hearing about players being tested twice a week, and then on the flip side, I'm hearing that there's not enough. There's a lack of uh, resources, you know, for our key workers, NHS, and obviously the, all the people who work in the supermarkets, etc. Um, I can't see how that's fair. How players can get tested twice a week, and yet little old nurse down the road can't even get one. And I think that's that's that doesn't sit right with me at all. It just stinks of greed, and I just think these players are no different to us, other than the size of their wallets. Right? Um, what makes them more privileged to? to get these resources over a, a lot of our key workers. That's number one. Number two, uh, this behind the closed doors and at neutral grounds. Um, I said it earlier on, you know, these players, they, you know, these are millionaire football players, right? It, if they, if it's behind closed doors and, you know, there are no fans in the stadium at all, then for me, Craig, it doesn't really matter where they play, you know, um, I just think it's 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 an irrelevant argument. Um, however, what I will say is, I do think it's a lot more common than what we think. I think there's a lot more players than we know who actually don't want to play, and I think oh, that I think could be a reason why it's been held up. Yeah, I think you somewhere know. there was there was a survey done that suggested perhaps up to twenty percent of Premier League players diesel were a little bit worried about coming back and playing. Yeah, exactly. Um, one thing I did see was Sky posted a section today that said a majority of clubs in the bottom half of the league want relegation to be scrapped if and when the season resumes. These clubs have been warned that removing relegation could make the competition less attractive to broadcasters and affect the revenue received from TV deals. Now, Claude, we've already seen Brighton, Watford and Villa publicly coming out against the idea of neutral stadiums, but surely, mate, we can't play out the rest of the season with no relegation. I just can't see how that works. Yeah, but I understand that. I I fully understand what you're saying, and uh, that is true. But then they have got a good case as well, because they could say, well, look, 
we've we've had the we've had the disadvantage of not being able to play all of, uh, our our required home games, and their their home games are, the, are are significant in their pursuit of safety. So I I, I can see how they're, they're angry about it. So. It, there isn't a no, there's a no win situation. We're going to have a lot of this. Whatever way you look at it, someone is going to complain about it. Um, because it's like, uh, say, no, let's go to the top, right? Say Liverpool were one, one point ahead at the top, or, or, uh, and then, uh, uh, say, uh, only one point ahead, and then they've got, they've, they've got less home games left. Then away, uh, uh, they've got their home games. They can't play their home games anymore. And suddenly, Man City overtake them. It's it's not a very fair fair uh, thing, is it? Do you un- what? do you get where I'm coming from here? Yeah, if if we can get to the point, Claude, where the Premier League and the government come to an agreement that we can play out the season with the fixtures in the stadiums they're supposed to be played, then can you see my argument as to why the no relegation stuff is just sides looking after their own interests if we can get to a point where you know let's say all clubs can play the rest of the games in their stadiums just behind closed doors no if you can play your own your own ground that's because you're used to that that home pitch you're used to it and yeah even if there's no fans there but uh it's it's a it's a very really difficult one idea we'd like um, to wait a while and get fans back, but who, how long will it be before fans are allowed back? Um, I, I don't know. I don't know anymore because one minute we're told uh, we're relaxing, the, uh, people now can go in on tubes and pack tubes up, but yeah, we can't. We can't. Um, we can't have fo- fans in football grounds. I don't understand this. It's. Um, Oh, I don't know, mate. It's it's a hard, it's it's a difficult one. I, as I say, I don't think there's any easy answer to this. I think I, I think Diesel touched on it a minute ago when he said that I think he basically implied and rightly so that there was always yeah. going to come a time, Diesel, where finances came into play here and the government wanted to get people back to work. And look, let's be quite blunt about this, mate, because I like to be honest on what I say. There was always yeah. going to come a time in a lot of countries, and I include my own country in this, where the country getting back to work almost outweighs human life. It's a horrible thing to say, but it is a harsh reality that sometimes yeah. this will boil down to economics. Yeah, no, it's true. It's true, Craig. It's just, it's like, at the end of the day, it's, it's you're, yeah, you're right in what you say there, because it's, you know, the economy... It, you know, and all that, obviously we still need to, at some point, you know, we can't keep on, you know, furloughing staff, right? You know, and furloughing people, it's a lot of money. My worry is the after effects of all of this, you know, so when it eventually goes back to normal, um, you know, you're talking about the biggest credit crunch of all. I mean, it's going to happen. We're talking billions here. Um, And that's not just us. That's obviously America. That's, you know, other countries as well. We're talking billions. So it's the after effects. My my whole thing is with this. It's just, it's at some point football's got to come back, right? But the social distancing thing will remain in place for the rest of the year, and in my opinion, probably beyond. You know, we're talking about a whole new world now. You know, the, and and as for the clubs, uh, the lower the clubs lower down the league moaning about it. Um, it's got to a point for me where I think the FA need to just make a decision, which is non-negotiable, right? And go with it because there is no win-win situation. I, I've wrecked my brains, Craig. I can't think of any possible way where everyone comes out happy, right? You know what they need to do is go with the fairest decision they possibly can, which is which is reasonable for the majority of clubs, and go with it. Otherwise, it's just going to be a constant moan from certain clubs or a constant, you know, uh, regression. And you're you're never going to move forward. Make a decision, stick with it, non-negotiable, like it or lump it, this is what we're doing, end of. You know? It's true, and I absolutely understand Claude was was trying to express himself a few minutes ago in the best possible way. It is a difficult situation. I'm tripping myself up trying to think 
what the next sentence is going to be because as Claude said, and rightly so, nobody has a Scooby-Doo what the hell is going on here. We're being told one thing and something else is happening. But, gents, what we can talk about with some happiness and I suppose some viewers, fans, and I'll come to you first on this, Claude, is transfers. Now, one kid from your club who we've got an eye on and I know you guys want to tie down to a new deal is Saka. What's your take on him, mate? Keep your hands off. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, yeah, I can see, I can see the attraction with Saka, but for me, uh, he'll be very limited to getting opportunities at Liverpool at the moment. I think uh, he's got to decide what does he want to do. Does he want to sit on the bench for twelve months, or right, he might get the medals, but uh, or try and pursue his career at Arsenal. Um, it's a difficult one. I don't want to lose him. I'm not sure if he's what the situation we are. I'm not sure if he's got one year left on his contract or if he's if it's coming to the end of his contract. Yeah, uh, uh, I wouldn't want him to go to Liverpool on a free because I think he's a very, very, very talented player. Still got a lot to lot. To, um, still got another level or two to go up. Uh, he's not quite at that top level yet, but. He's got a lot, a lot of potential. Uh, I would be very, very, very sad to see him go. I think, um, I, I think you're spot on. I think he is. He's got one more year on his contract. But what I wonder, and I don't know enough about this kid to know this, is if he was to go on a free. I think if he's been trained and brought up at Arsenal, that he, Arsenal would be due compensation for bringing him through. Much like when we got. Um, when we got Danny Ings on a free, we had to go to a tribunal and pay Burnley a fee for his education, a footballing education as it is. So even if he was to go on a free, Claude, I think you guys would probably be due some money anyway. But I know what you're saying. Arsenal are working hard, and I can see why to tie a very talented young footballer down to a new improved deal. Yeah, I, 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 I mean, I, I want him to stay, and I hope we can improve his contract. Uh, but it'll be very interesting to see how it goes in the summer. I thought uh, I thought the contract was ending this summer, but I'm not sure. I think they might have one year left, so Arsenal's still got some some sort of hold on him. So um, mm, it'd be a, it'd be a, um, I don't see with with Liverpool. I don't he'll, he will not, he will definitely not get in straight away because of course you've got so many players in front of him at the moment. But we'll see. Uh, uh, no, I can't say no more than that, to be honest. No, no, but I, I hear you coming from. I, um, I don't know where Diesel's coming on this. Um, yeah, uh, listen. I think uh, Diesel's got to tell me to fuck off and keep her hands off him as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, take him, Craig. No, I'm joking. No, yeah, you know what? Yeah, I agree with Claude. I think what we need to realise, Craig, as well, is that, and, and obviously I said this on a previous stream, is that, Saka's had a really good. He's had a really good season, right? You know, he's predominantly a left winger, and obviously, as we all know, he's been uh, he's been like a makeshift left back, right? And he's he's playing in a position that's alien to him, but he's he's outperformed. He's he's been brilliant. However, this we as as a lot of Arsenal fans, we do this thing where we have you know we get a young player, he has half a good season, and then we overhype him, right? He's eighteen. He's got plenty of time, right? My opinion, I can sort of. There's a lot of, be, you know, benefits and positives. I look at it like this: if I was him, I'm 18, and Liverpool have approached me, or they, you know, I, I I know that Liverpool are interested. There's a there is a part of me that's looking at Liverpool, the way that they're playing, the players they've got, and obviously, you know, you're winning cups, and and I'm thinking, do you know what? I left some of that, but I would expect. The only thing is, he's at an age where he needs to be playing on a regular, right? He needs to be a mainstay in the side. He won't do that at Liverpool, not yet, right? Whereas at Arsenal, if I was his agent, I'll be saying to him, stay at Arsenal, right, for another two years because here you know you're going to get games. You're going to play week in, week out, right? I judge players a lot, Craig, in the second season. I've seen bigger and better players than Seca. Blow us away. And then second season, when the opposition know how he plays, know how he moves, knows his movements, right? they can't keep it up. I'm not saying that's going to happen to him because he, he's got a lot of uh, potential, right? But 
all I would say is we just need to relax and calm down. Let's not overhype him too much. He is still a kid. Right? But what for him now, the most important thing for Saka at 18 years of age is to play every week, week in, week out. Learn your game. You're still learning. And if in two years he's smashing it and he wants to go, he'll have his pick of clubs. You know what I'm saying? But I think we just need to be a bit more, just, uh, you know, relax on him a little bit. Um, but yeah, he's 18. He, he's got years to go. You know, I've, we've seen kids, Craig, haven't we? You know, let's be honest, we could name them now. We've seen kids who get things too quick, right? And obviously, you know, they, they, they get seduced by the money and the glamour of certain clubs and they lose themselves. He needs to be at a club, you know, he needs to be looked after. Don't let it go to his head. Stay humble. And trust me, the riches will come. You know, I, I, it will I come. I absolutely agree, Diesel. Yeah. I've said I've said the yeah. same about young Harland. I've said the same about uh, the kid at Leicester, Madison. There is no rush. These players have, they can exactly. probably play now until they're 35, 36 years of age. I'd love Saka at Liverpool. But if I'm him, rightly so, and he's happy where he is, if the club can tie him down to a new deal, I understand exactly where you're coming from. Now, Mr. Claude, I do have a question for you, sir. Do you think there's going to be much activity in the window as a whole in this summer? And who have Arsenal got their eye on? Oh, I think everyone is going to be struggling at the moment because uh, they, uh, we, as you can see, uh, Arsenal have decided, asked their players to take a 12% pay cut. And it would be quite... <laughs> quite amazing that they would um, put out big money after that. So I don't think that's going to happen. I think we're looking for loan deals more uh, more, more than anything. I mean, probably swap deals. I think possi- possibility of uh, Lacazette going to Atletico Madrid and uh, Thomas Partey, who is a defensive midfielder coming in. That's been strongly suggested. Uh, there's a lot of suggestions saying that about... Um, uh, what was it? Uh, William from Liverpool, uh, from Chelsea. Uh, but I can't see that because I think we've got enough wide players. I don't think it's necessary for us. And also, we've got uh, Saliba, who is already coming anyway. We got him last season and then we sent him out on loan. So he, he'll be coming in. So apart from that, I can't, uh, I can't see anything else. Um, not that much happening. Uh, more ha- that's the only real things I can see at the moment. Um, there's the, the um, yeah, that's all I can see really. I, I can't see anything else about that uh, going out. Of course, you just mentioned uh, the possibility of Saka going to Liverpool. I hope it doesn't happen. Um, and even the, the players that we've got that we what we need to offload, it would be very difficult to offload them because of the money that's not available at the moment. And who's going to pay? Who's going to pay Ozil three hundred and fifty thousand pound a week when we're in this financial crisis that we are in at the moment? So we won't be able to offload these players like that. So it's going to be a very difficult summer for us. I was thinking something similar about a former player of yours as well. You spoke there about Ozo. I mean, United are going to try and move on Sanchez permanently. And who the fuck is going to pay him the type of money that he's getting now? And I think you've hit the nail on the head, Claude. I think we're going to see a lot more of this player to player or player swap for a player involved in deals. And one thing that I heard muted in a kind of a big deal was was Antoine Griezmann heading to Paris Saint-Germain with Neymar going back the other way. So I think you're spot on, Claude. And Brian Morrissey, one of our mods on the channel as well, thinks that you don't usually see many straight swaps like that or players in, like players included in deals these days. It's not as common as you think. And Thomas Partey, somebody who was linked with us at one point, but I genuinely didn't think we had the need for. I think he'd be a great piece of business for you guys, Claude. And um, Have you watched much of him? I mean, obviously you've seen Atletico not go sell the Champions League, so I'm a bit bitter about that, but he's a good player. I saw him against... Uh, I should not be judging players on one one game, but there was a lot of high, high, high reports from people that watch Spanish football. Uh, but I did see him against Liverpool. I thought he was very impressive. Uh, in that in the game against Liverpool, but then you can't judge. It's very difficult for me to say on one game 
to judge a player. I mean, if I'd have done that, I'd have said John Jensen when we bought John Jensen for that <laughs> that goal we scored in the European final. Everyone's going mad. And look what happened there. He never, he hardly ever scored for us. He scored one more goal for us. So, listen, I, this is what I'm trying to say. You can't judge players by watching them once. But he has got high, he's very highly regarded in Spain. He's played a lot uh, for Atletico Madrid. Uh, Lacazette is wanted to go to Atletico Madrid before they had that transfer ban. And it suits both parties. And I think uh, both could benefit. Lacazette's confidence has gone a bit at Arsenal. And I think they could benefit, both could be, uh, benefit from the move. These, I love your take on that exact same deal, and I also might want to ask you because I, I don't think I know if I had a chance to ask you this on, on the stream on oh. your own channel. Is what was Arsenal fans' take on Alex Oxley Chamberlain's move to Liverpool and the fee that was paid from? Well, I'll start with the deal first. I think the uh, if we've got a chance to swap Lacazette to, uh, with Partey coming our way, I would take that all day long, Craig. Right. In, this is the thing, right? Arsenal is a very, very big club, especially in Africa, right? Big club, massive. And, um, you know, you're hearing noises about, obviously, Partey's dad, obviously, mentioning Arsenal. Um, the, for me, it's like it's like with a salesman, you know, if a good salesman can always spot buying signals, right? And um, I, I genuinely think Arsenal could get Partey. The issue I've got with this club of ours is we differ too much, right? And then we allow another club to quickly get in and get him and, and you know, and wrap it up, right? We're too slow off the mark. Um, I generally do think he, he would come to Arsenal. Um, I think he's even come out and said, growing up, obviously, you know, in Africa, obviously, Arsenal is a, is a very well-supported club. Anything like that, a buying signal, in my opinion. You go for it and sound the player out. They've got a player we want and we've got something they want. As, as, as far as I'm concerned, it's as simple as that, right? Midfield enforcer. And I think Thomas Party fits that bill. Um, so if, if, if it was up to me, do it all day long. Do I have confidence in it? To be honest, Craig, no. Um, so that answers that. But... Um, Alex Oxley chamberlain um, very, very good player. Um, slightly underrated, in my opinion, when he was at the Arsenal. Um, he's the kind of player, Craig, I, that I just knew um, would get better. For him to get better he, and, and to realise his potential, hard as it is to say, at that time, the best thing for him to do would have been to have left us. And I think we're seeing the proof now. You know, proof is in the pudding. You know, he needed a coach who had confidence in him. Play him in the position where he wants to play. Because when he played in that centre mid for us, he played very well. And then the next game, he was on the wing again. Then he was in the middle. Then he was on the wing. You know, in my opinion, Wenger ruined him. And when you've got a player who leaves us and would have been a more money if he'd stayed, but took less money, he just wanted out the club. That's that's alarm bells for me. That's alarm bells. And you guys, for forty million, I believe it was, you've got one hell of a player there, and he's only going to get better, right? Um, I feel for him because of injuries, but before he got that injury, he was he was smashing it for uh, you know um, you guys. Every time he played, he was doing the business, and it's it makes a difference when you've got a manager like Klopp, who's got such confidence in him. I tell you what. I'm watching him thrive and I'm looking at it out of jealousy, Craig, if I'm honest, and thinking, do you know what? He could have been doing that for us. How we could do with Ox right now. You know? I so, absolutely love yeah. having him at the club, Diesel. I'm not going to lie, mate. Even when he's mm. not playing, and it was the, the year we lost the Champions League final against Real Madrid and he went off against Roma with that, with that injury that, that kept him out for a long time. Even the stuff that he did in the background, the social media, Liverpool fans warmed to him straight away. And I, I have yet to come across a Liverpool fan that doesn't love having Alex Oxley Chamberlain at the club. And it's um, from yeah. our point of view, I mean, I love him and I, I hope that he continues to stay fit. Claude, I wanted to come back to you, mate, to touch on, on the, the Lacazette thing because from an outsider's perspective, I look at Lacazette and think, you know what? 
he's a good player. One, why would Arsenal want to get rid of him? And two, with the Aubameyang situation being as tricky as it is, are you a little bit worried, mate, that you could perhaps have two top-notch strikers going out the door? No, um, also, by the way, by the way, I forgot about it. Wasn't there a link there uh, I heard about? A party for a Chamberlain swap deal as well. That could come into Liverpool showing an interest with a uh, swap deal with uh, Oxlade Chamberlain and uh, Thomas Party. So I there's think another... Liverpool fans would revolt if Alex Oxlade Chamberlain and his girlfriend were to head off towards Madrid because we absolutely love them both at the well, club, that's... mate. Yeah, nothing but clickbait that. Yeah, well, I don't know. That's what I was. I, I saw in uh, on one of the. Uh, maybe that you you might be right on click, but no, I think Lacazette is uh, he does work very hard. I just feel that this season it's not it's just not happening for him, and uh, he looks. How can I say? I don't think it works with him and Aubameyang because Aubameyang walk goes out wide, he takes him out of his best position where he could be down the middle. Uh, I don't think it works. And I think it would be... I think we'd keep a Bamiang. Yeah, we've got to make every effort to keep a Bamiang. But our, our main priority, if you're going to ask me if if you lose a Bamiang or you lose Lacazette, I'd lose, I'd lose Alexander Lacazette. Uh, for a simple reason, I think uh, a Bamiang will give us the goals. I don't think... And... Um, we are desperately needing that that midfield uh, player that, uh, in that type of player that Thomas Party will. Uh, that's the type of player we do need in midfield. Our midfield at the moment is shocking, to be honest with you. I think Diesel will agree with me. He's a yeah, shock. Yeah. State. He's in a shocking state at the moment, and we need to adjust that as well as we need another centre half. I think so. These are the positions that we need to work on. So, for me, yes, I would let him go. But because I think, I think in Spain he might actually, uh, it might suit him even more playing for Atletico Madrid. And he might might do him a favour, and it will do us a favour. It work. I think the deal would work for both clubs. Diesel, one one player of ours who's actually strangely enough being linked to you guys at one point was Dejan Lovren. Now that that shocked me when I see it from the point of view of. Like you've already got questionable centre back, and I say that with respect, mate. Uh, you don't need to be adding Deja Lovren into that mix, surely. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah. Again, Craig, if I'm honest, I, I, it just seems like clickbait to me. I mean, don't forget we've got eight centre halves at the club, right? We've got eight centre halves, and if I'm totally honest, none of them are good enough, you know. Um, it, it's it smacks of desperation, really, when we've got eight centre backs, and yet every Arsenal fan will tell you we we are crying out for a top class centre back, and we've got eight centre backs at the club. Dejan Lovren, um, for me, is an okay player. He's one of those players for me. He becomes good as long as he's got someone quality beside him, right? And I think. Um, you know, when you're playing alongside Virgil uh, Van Dijk, I mean, obviously, I th- his performances did go up, and obviously, he looks a really good player. But I think, I think to get the best out of Lovren, he it all depends on who's alongside him. Um, you know, so I think prior to VVD coming in, I thought he was poor, um, if I'm honest. And I, I think a lot of I think a lot of Liverpool fans have said that. I don't think he's that much loved at the club, if I'm honest. It's um, it's a tricky one. I mean. There are mm. periods where I mean, he had an absolute stinker a couple of years back against against Spurs at Wembley, and it was a horrendous, one of the worst centre back performances I've seen. But it, to his immense credit, he goes through periods months on end where he shows that he can be a top level centre back. I mean, let's not forget he's played in the World Cup final with Croatia. He's been in Champions League finals with the Reds. He he has it in him, but he also does have a Dejan Lovren moment in him as well. Oh yeah, do you know what, right? It's, it's it's like you say that. My flip side to that is, we've got a centre half who's won a World Cup, and he's dreadful, Mustafi. You know, it's it's. But again, again, I won't be too hard on him because, and I think Claude would agree, he's improved a lot. He does have 
decent games, but there's there's just a mistake in him. And unfortunately, it's always the same mistake. It's like he doesn't learn. You know, you expect players to obviously watch games after and obviously um, wrinkle those uh, those mistakes out and, and learn from them, but he doesn't. And I think Lovren, pro- probably, I would say, would probably fall in the same category, you know, albeit he doesn't make as many as Mustafi, but, you know. One league that is coming back, Claude, and it starts at the weekend is the Bundesliga. I mean, it, it's football. It's not quite Premier League football yet, mate, but are you going to be watching it? Are you going to be keeping an eye on the Bundesliga? Yeah. At the moment, I watch two flies going up the wall. Uh, 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 now, uh, to be honest, yeah, I will, I will, I will watch it. I mean, I don't know what channel, what channel will they like, will be is on a Pacific channel. I probably will I watch think, it. Yeah. I think BT have the rights to it in the UK, if my memory serves me correct. Although I was well, checking, they still haven't got a TV schedule up for it yet because they haven't sorted that out yet. I believe. Is it this weekend it's coming back, isn't it? This weekend coming up, isn't it? Yep, spot on. Right, and uh, is the is the championship in a? Uh, is it in? Uh, is it like Bayern Munich that far ahead, or is it uh, close? Or I don't know. I mean, I'm not. I don't follow it, but uh, it's, it's quite probably... close. Le- Leipzig, uh, Bayern Munich, uh, Dortmund coming up in the rear, but it's a close enough title race. I mean, it's not a Bayern yeah. Munich walk away it's like it has been in recent years. Should be a good watch with all them cardboard cutouts. Uh, <laughs> That's brilliant, isn't it? Oh, my God. Whatever next. I remember the old Arsenal when they had the mural up behind the, behind the, behind the goal. It really uh, wasted some waste of time. But, um, yeah, it should be good. Um, uh, it would be, be interesting to see what... I think that it could be the marker now because I think the Premier League now will look at that and say, look, how's that working? Can we get back now? You know what I'm saying? That could be the mark of when the Premier League comes back as well. So we'll see how that goes. How many how many players uh, are going to come through it with unharmed? And let's hope everyone comes unharmed and no one, there's no casualties through all of this. And yeah, it'll be interesting. I, I, I probably will give it a watch. Uh, it's better to watch it, as I said. As I said, I've been, all I've been doing is watching two flies race up the wall at the moment. So, so be <laughs> I, I'm, I'm oh, not, God, not just watching the me. flies, Claude, mate. I'm putting money on the flies walking up the walls at this point. You know what I mean? I need something to keep me entertained. Diesel, uh, for you, buddy, I think Claude nailed it when he said that the, we can learn a lot here from the Bundesliga. We'll be able to see how it works for them with regards to the testing. Uh, to the, the yeah. players inside the stadiums, of course, as well, playing behind closed doors. And I do like that. I think it was Bruce Munch and Gladbach who did that thing where they allowed fans to buy a cardboard cutout image of themselves. And there was even a few cheeky Bruce Dortmund fans who who paid for some of the away end. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's, it's... I'm looking forward to... When you said uh, Claude nailed it, Craig, at first I thought you meant he nailed it because he he, uh, he bet on one, one of the flies and uh, he got the winner. But, oh, we, cl- um, we cleaned uh, up, mate. Me and Claude this. made a fortune. <laughs> oh, it's never me, is it? No, nah, but um, it's... Um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, mate. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. To be honest, Craig, I think, I think when we spoke briefly, I think uh, you said the same. Obviously, first and foremost, I'm an Arsenal fan, but I'm also a, I'm a big, I'm a big football fan. Meaning, obviously, even if Arsenal aren't playing, you know, and I put Sky on and there's a, a Vauxhall conference game and nothing else, I'll watch it. I love watching football, you know. So, the the fact that, obviously, the Bundesliga's back, which is a good league as well. You know, I do like the league over there. Um, got some really good players in that league. You know, I'm looking forward to it. I am looking forward to it. I don't care who's playing. I think I've been starved of football so much now that... Um, Anything, anyone who's playing, I will happily watch it. You know, don't get me wrong. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. My, my only, the only thing is, I just hope and pray that it all goes swimmingly and it goes nice. And you know, because it, the, uh, you, you know, you do fear if, if if anything was to happen regarding this COVID-19, you know, it would just throw things into disarray even more so than what it, you know, than what it has been already. But I've got every confidence in the, in, um, in in the German league because one of very few countries, Craig, who have done things properly. 
done things properly, done it the right way, and you know they're more or less out of this now. And you have to give, you know, have to obviously take your hat off to them. You know, they've done it properly. I'm jealous. You know, yeah, they don't, they we don't should don't have fuck followed about the that Germans. Yeah, the exactly. Germans definitely don't fuck about. Now, while I have both you guys on, I do want to take a second to, to give a shout out to Ian Wright actually for the way he publicly dealt with some horrible little bastard that, that racially yeah. abused him. And I, and I want to say, look, I, I've always admired Ian Wright's views on, on football. He seems like a lovely fella. And I'm, I'm saddened, Diesel, that we're still in a world where people like Ian Wright and other people have to put up with this type of shit, mate. It is disgusting. There is no... And from the surname, I actually feel like the guy might be Irish. From the surname that was that, that of the uh, Instagram DM that was put up. It is horrible. Yeah. I just want to say that I completely back Ian Wright and applaud him for speaking up again about it. I just wanted to get your take on it really quickly, if I can. Yeah, I saw it earlier on on Twitter. Obviously, straight away, I liked it and obviously uh, retweeted it because obviously I want everyone to know about, about this little bastard. Um, the fact, do you know what? The thing is as well, someone, I saw another tweet um, from this guy who's obviously looked at this, this, this scumbag's profile and there's a picture of him posing with a black guy. You know, and it just, it just goes to show, doesn't it? It just, Craig, you know what? It's, I've always said, right? When people ask, has racism improved? There's a there's a, a massive part of me that thinks it it hasn't so much improved. I just think it's a lot more hidden. I think back in the day, you knew what was what. Now, um, you know, someone who's very friendly to you behind your back could be the one who's holding the knife. You know, um, so it's it's unfortunate. We're always it's it's never going to change really. Um, it's it, all it is is people hiding behind keyboards. You know. And uh, I totally respect him right for outing him uh, to right, and I hope he's having a hard time now, this scumbag, whoever he is, because uh, obviously he would have been recognised by a lot of people. Um, it's one of them. It's just one of them things. It's one of them things. I'd like to see him. I'd like to ask the question: Would you say those things if you had Ian Wright standing in front of your face? Because I guarantee not. it'd be a totally, totally different conversation. Yeah, I think you know, I, I, yeah. I, I, I want to attribute this, I think, to Martin Luther King, but you want to be judged by the content of your character and not by the colour of your skin. And it, is, it is, Claude, it's a time, mate, where, I mean, you and I are, I don't know how old Diesel is, but I'm heading for 40, and, and I mean, mate, there's, there's no room in society, let alone football, for this kind of carry-on and, and the stuff that Ridey has put up with there, mate. I thought those, I hope naively that those days are behind us. Well, this is the problem. We all think uh, we uh, we go on about uh, how this country is better at handling race. Uh, it's more has learned its lesson over racism, but I'm afraid I think this country is in a worse state than anywhere else. And I'll tell you why: because it's all hidden, and that's that exactly what Diesel said. Is a lot of it is hidden. There's a lot of hidden racism uh, in 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 this country at the moment, and. It's disgusting. It's. Um, I hope the guy has been dealt with, uh, and been spoken to, or, or at least been given some sort of call, uh, some sort of caution. This is not acceptable. That is not acceptable at all. And it's just. I don't know more what more to say, but unfortunately, we live in the world of social media, where people have got the freedom to get attention. A lot of attention on on social, and that's the way they they want to get attention. So they they think, oh look look at me, I've just got Ian Wright's back up, and that's the way he's got his attention. He's got his name in the lights, and that's the way he's got his name in the lights. So what more can you say than that? Um, I feel very sad. I don't know how, uh, how we because now I think um, the the problem is before. You didn't. You couldn't DM someone on Twitter if you if you didn't uh, if he didn't follow you. But now you can, which uh, maybe that should be um, looked at as well. Where if you if the guy if Ian Wright or someone like me doesn't follow some that they can't uh, DM DM him. So it's it's all it's an awful awful thing. For a bit of fun, gents, and to light, have a bit of light-hearted humour before we finish up, I want to ask you both, and I start with you, Diesel. What shows may have you been binge-watching during this lockdown? 
Craig, I can add a lot to this conversation, trust me. Right, so... We'll, we'll, we'll assume Pornhub has got lashed out of it, because look, look <laughs> hands up, let's be honest. Let's be honest. I'm, I'm not posh enough to uh, get the I'm premium, not... but... Uh, I don't watch it anymore, mate. I've uh, I've totally uh, I've, I've rinsed it. It's all about it's all about hamster. <laughs> but um, yeah. <laughs> no, uh, I've been listen. I'm I'm a massive massive TV junkie, right? And um, uh, so obviously I, I'm I'm literally watching everything on Netflix. I've recently signed up to Amazon Prime, and that's really good. There's some really good films on there. I've just finished watching. Oh, well, over the weekend, I watched um, Afterlife. Um, Ricky Gervais and I would recommend anyone to watch that because that has got every emotion possible. I laughed, I cried and I'm not ashamed to admit it it really gets you Craig, it really gets you and anyone who's got a heart um, or who thinks they can sit through something and not cry watch this because I'll tell you it, it will have you in bits um, that was brilliant, really uh, well uh, well written and I've also just, I've just finished watching Gangs of London um, two shows so far apart, it's unreal. But yeah, Gangs of London, and honestly, I'm about to start watching it again. It was that good. Um, so yeah, absolutely brilliant. But After, anything uh, horror, I'll watch. Afterlife, I, I've, I'm in. I'm into season two or series two now. But as you said, Ricky Gervais is a master of the art of, of what he does, and it is it's poignant to times. As you said, when he looks back at the videos of his wife and. It's funny, like when he meets a little ginger kid at the school and, and stuff like that, and the postman. Oh, that was it, class. <laughs> it, it, ha, it has its moments for sure, mate. Um, and Claude, what about yourself? What have you been watching? It's funny enough, I, mean, uh, I, I used to think my 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 mum who uh, departed in two thousand and nine. She used to watch Waterloo Road, and I thought, oh, what the world? why do they keep watching this every week? <clears throat> So I thought uh, I went on and had a look at it. I was like, I've like, been watching every every series through through and forward. I mean, so I've watched all that, and um, uh, it, it reminded me of my school days. You know, what I mean, when we was all at school. So, that, back, so, back, so that, back in the black and white days. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't even think it was black and white when I was going to school. Uh, I don't you used to go was, to work in Olsen Cart. <laughs> I don't think it was even television when I went to school, mate. Um, <clears throat> so, I've uh, been watching that. I've been watching old football videos. <clears throat> um, the glory ones when Arsenal, um, uh, the 2004 unbeaten season, watching games like that going through. All different things, all different. Uh, uh, I saw a brilliant Brian Clough documentary. Um, the great Brian Clough, uh, what an amazing guy! And what I couldn't, uh, well, I was shocked because I didn't realize how bad that how he never got the England job, uh, yeah. Yeah. because of the snobs that rather have someone, um, that, that uh, they rather have a yes man. And the guy, and I didn't realize this that Ron Greenwood wasn't even a candidate until I watched this, uh. This um, this uh, documentary uh, that he wasn't even a can uh, candidate, so uh, and he got the job instead of Brian Clough, and uh, they went for the the guy that didn't spoke up against them, and that was that Harold Thompson at the time, uh, and so maybe England will regret they never had Brian Clough as a manager because I think they would have been a lot better. At least he would have put a few people in their place. Well, if, anybody uh, has, if anyone has Netflix and hasn't watched Tiger King, yeah, get get on it. Um, it is yeah. the most batshit crazy. Uh, if you have, if you don't know what it's about, lads, it's it's basically oh. about exotic animal keepers in America, but it links into murder. Oh. It links into it, it. It's mental. I can't even try to describe it. It's on uh, Netflix. I think it's a, it's an Honestly. eight part documentary. If, if my memory's right, but it is mental. Craig, you know what? Um, on Friday, because um, obviously everyone's been talking about it, and I thought, oh, you know, what's all the fuss about? I've watched the first episode, right? I've watched the first one, so I'm I'm going to watch the second one shortly. Um, but and I don't know what goes on. What one thing I do know is there's something seriously wrong with that woman. Um, that's all I'll say. <laughs> but yeah, um, apparently I've been I've been told that obviously, yeah. Keep your eye on her because she's not what she seems. But I'm going to carry on watching it, and everyone's raving about it, so I've got to watch it. 
It's amazing. Look, gents, I'm going to let both of you go, but I want to say to everybody out there, please go over, check out Claude and the Bances on Hot Mike, Claude and the Bances on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, and of course, uh, Claude Gunner TV as well. Gents, it has been a true pleasure having you both on. I hope to catch up with you real soon. Claude, I know I speak for all of us here when I want to wish you all our best, mate. Lots of love to you and to your dad as well. Um it's thank been you. honestly Claude it's been a pleasure mate chatting to you uh, no it's been a pleasure that you've uh, thank you so much for inviting me on I really I really have enjoyed it and uh, I I really do hope and to be uh, because I've got a lot of admit I've always had a lot of uh, admit, admired Liverpool the way they've done things and everything the style the class that they showed at Anfield when they were um, in 89 when they uh, the, the uh, saluted Arsenal as they won the league. But I've always had that, that admiration for them. They're a great football club. Uh, I, I always say Liverpool fans know their, know, know, know their football. And I, and I mean that. I really do mean that. And uh, uh, I will... Uh, hopefully, they get the title that they deserve. You're a gent, sir. And Diesel, as always, it's been an absolute pleasure catching up with you as well, my friend. Yeah, no, Craig. Yeah, just just to echo what Claude said, I really, you know, we really appreciate you got, you know, you having us on, um, and much appreciated for all the nice comments in the chat room as well. Um, Craig, top man, got to know you really well lately, and um, I'm so glad we have. I'm so glad we stopped, you know, that we're talking now, and you know, we're friends, mate. We look after each other, so yeah, you're part of our family, mate. That's for sure. So really appreciate it. You know what, mate? That does mean the world to me, and I mean that sincerely. And for Liverpool fans watching, don't worry, the show isn't about to end. We're going to carry on. I just want to say goodbye to the two lads. And again, Claude, Diesel, thank you so much for coming on, and we will catch up real soon, and lots of love to you both. Cheers, Craig. All the best, mate. Top man, top man. Thank you, guys. Right, guys, it is just us now, and we are going to carry on and get back to all things Liverpool. As always, it's a true pleasure. It was so much fun talking to Claude and Diesel. Let me just get these headphones off. I need to, your ears readjust when you get the old headphones off, and there's loads for us to get through from a Liverpool perspective. Uh, let me just change the OBS to the old hot mic so I can give it a plug as well. Ladies and gents, if you did enjoy that chat with Claude and Diesel, don't forget that they are also now on hot mic as well. So please do help us out by downloading that hot mic app. There is a link in the description. It's absolutely free and with the Bundesliga coming up as well at the weekend, our watch alongs are going to be starting on there. So please do download the hot mic app. Put in the code you see on the screen there now, Anfield. All capital letters, all one word. And when we get to 2,000 followers on there, not only will I do a forfeit, as I promised, I'm going to uh, give away another £50 Amazon gift card to one of our followers on there as well. And keep an eye out, because there's about to be some big hot mic news dropping over the next few days or so. So keep an eye out on that app. I keep picking it up, but I know things that I can't quite let you guys know yet. But please do download that app, put in the code Anfield, give us a follow, and then, of course, go over there, Give Claude and the guys a follow as well. And look, let's get stuck into all things Liverpool now because there is a load for us to get through, ladies and gentlemen. So, former uh, Leipzig boss Ralph Ranić has warned Timo Werner against the move to Liverpool and used Naby Keita as an example as to why he shouldn't move. Talking about it, he said, so far... He's not the player that he was here that he was here with regards to Keita. The surroundings must be right for Timo. That is the case here. I want to get your thoughts on that, ladies and gentlemen. Do you think the Werner move is going to happen? There's loads of other stuff for us to get through as well. Settle in. This could be another 45, 50 minutes, ladies and gents, and I hope you can stay with me. I've also got some brilliant news to say that I've got a couple of interviews secured. Um I'm going to be chatting with Miguel Delaney of The Independent. Uh, that won't be live. That'll be something that we'll pre-record. I have a stream schedule for Thursday night with Jan Agafjortoft as well. Um, I have another couple in the works that I can't quite talk about just yet because we haven't got them over the line with regards to, to nailing them down to exact dates and times and stuff. But we are working hard for you guys to bring you as much fun content as we can and as many different voices as we can until the Premier League gets back into action. So as I said, keep an eye on. We did have James Pierce, formerly of the Echo, now of the Athletic on recently as well. And I hope you guys have checked out that interview 
thank you so much to James Pierce for giving up his time and I'm really looking forward to those chats with Miguel Delaney with Jan Agafjortov and the couple of other people that I can't quite let you guys know about as well um, as always ladies and gentlemen super chats are open memberships are open memberships to the channel are just 99p a month that gets you access to the discord group as well uh, gets you use of all the cool emojis that you see people messing about with on the screen and it gets the Anfield Agenda logo beside your name there is also an ultra membership that's 4 99 a month and that will get you everything I've spoken about before and then that will get you the special podcast that's going to be coming out with myself and Connor and um, we're going to be doing that twice a month at a minimum as well also anyone that's watching us on hot mic right now if I can ask you guys one favor and I'm going to come into the chat now because I know when I've got guests on it's very difficult for me to to dip into the chat because I, I want to talk to the guests and give them their time to to air their views and opinions so I know sometimes that means that I neglect the live chat well this is why I'm staying on longer because I want to get to your opinions and I want to get your thoughts so uh, Hot Mike as well said, Craig, I need that Amazon gift card. Origi said over on Hot Mike. Then make sure you're following us, mate, on Hot Mike. And if you are following us, you're in with a shout of getting that Amazon gift card because we're not a million miles off getting to 2,000. I'm hoping that we'll get to 2,000 followers before the season's out anyway. So, again, thank you for that. Joanne, thank you for the super stickers. I've seen the first one earlier on. It's not a start of an Anfield Agenda stream without Joanne giving us the onset super sticker. So thank you so much for that. Right, let me get to your comments. Um, Liverpool, you never walk alone, says Naby hasn't flopped. Absolutely agree. Delwyn Jones said, Timo coming to Liverpool at you'll never walk alone. Uh, Eliza John 5 said, Fjortoff was class at Swindon Town. Um, he's just a class bloke all around. I mean, if you've seen his interviews with Jurgen Klopp, the, the Let's Talk About Six interview and stuff like that as well. He's uh, he's lots of fun and, and I really appreciate him giving up his time like that for a chat. And that will be live, that one. It should be Thursday night at half past eight if everything goes to plan. And, you know, Jan's schedule might change. Something might come up. But it is planned for Thursday at half past eight. So I'm very much looking forward to that one as well. And uh, let me just dip over the hot mic, see if we've got any more opinions or questions. Red for Live said, hello to everybody. Hope you're all keeping well and uh, winning the league on the way on the right pitch. Uh, what else have we got? Joanne. Joanne's made great use of all those Anfield Agenda emojis, which is what you get if you become a member. And I'm not sure if we've quite hit the 200 members yet, but we're getting very close indeed. Uh, so the Keep also believe that Leon will be willing to sell... Hussey Moir for around £44 million. Pound. And we've heard mixed views from different journalists on this one. Uh, so I want to know what you guys think about the possibility of Moir coming to Liverpool. And we know for a fact that Lyon's chairman, Jean-Michel Aulas, or as we nicknamed him on the channel, and this is an old school one, Johnny Cunty Locks is a real nightmare to negotiate with. I mean, Nabil Fakir, the Fakir situation ring any bells with people. So um, I'd love... I'd love us to go out and get a wire, but Aulas is very difficult to deal with. Um, and with the financial situation as it is, I don't know if that's us pushing our luck. Um, but nobody can convince me that we won't get Werner. I mean, nobody. I mean, I'm going to... Even every journalist in the world can tell me that one's not going to happen. But I I'm, I think we'll get Werner over the line. I really do. Um, Seamus Moore said, Werner and Keita could click at Liverpool. The dugout, how are you, sir, said. Said that earlier, Craig, but my thoughts are with everyone connected to Bradford City on the 35th anniversary of the Valley Parade fire and thoughts are definitely with everyone who lost their loved ones too. A beautiful sentiment, Doug, and of course one that we wholeheartedly echo on the chat as well. Uh, Carl, Kent Coastal, Kent Coastal Holiday Let's. Uh, any update on what happens with the out-of-contract players? Yes, there has been an update on that, Carl. So the Premier League have been given the nod to extend those players' contracts to the end of the season. And I think that's it was always going to happen, wasn't it? But it, it has been approved now that they can extend those players' contracts just to see out the remainder of the season. So, yeah, the likes of Adam Lallana, from our perspective, Nathaniel Klein, things like that, uh, Willie and at Chelsea, their contracts will just now renew to the end of the season. Obviously, the clubs will sit down, you know, cross the T's, dot the I's and get everything sorted out. Uh, Digger True Red said, Craig, Sky Sports have confirmed if a player gets the virus, the whole team will be put into quarantine. What do you think? Look, I will defer to the medical experts, mate, on this because it's not... I mean, how can I give an opinion on that when... You know, there are people far more educated and far more better placed or far better placed than myself 
uh, to give that that situation in Germany it's been a little bit different I think um in certain situations I mean I think Dresden I think have had to delay a couple of matches for the very reason that you've spoken about I think so this is a fluid situation mate and one that will change as we go along and and it's why I think what's happening with the Bundesliga will be so important for the rest of us to be able to sit back, Premier League included. And they had their stakeholders um, conference call today. And there's loads of stuff in that that I wanted to get through as well. Is uh, What have we got? I'm going to miss Lalana. actually said Gabriel. Yeah, I mean, I've mixed views on Lalana. I mean, when Jurgen Klopp first came to the club, he was so important to us. He was... It was a really pivotal part of the press that we had himself and Bobby Firmino. Um, I think that injury and father time have slowly started to catch up with uh, Adam Lallana. And although I think it is the right time for him to move on, I will always remember him fondly and wish him well with the rest of his career. Um, Gazzetta della Sport believe that... What have we got? Uh, what have we got? Who's it? Uh, oh, sorry, yes. Gazzetta della Sport believe that Roma are weighing up a move for Dejan Lovren, whom I mentioned earlier on when I was talking to Diesel and Claude. Uh, it's believed that they view him as a more affordable option than keeping Manchester United's current loanee, Chris Smalling. So again, I'd love to get your thoughts on that one, ladies and gentlemen. What do you think? Do you think we're going to see Lovren move on at the end of the season? And if so, what do Liverpool do? Do Liverpool just, you know, sell him and bring through Sepp Vandenberg, maybe Keanu Hoover, or the Liverpool go out and sign an experienced centre-back. We won't be signing Koulibaly. I know a lot of people are going to be coming at me saying, Koulibaly, Koulibaly. It just, just won't happen, I'm afraid. I mean, it's just too much money in this current climate for a player who wouldn't be a top priority for us right now. I think a forward and maybe a midfielder, from what I can gather, are, are the, the positions that we're looking at. Uh, Delwyn Jones said Noir is very good young I just can't see us getting another new midfielder um, Lalana, that goal versus Norwich said Charlie Minchin Sel Lovren said Liverpool you'll never walk alone uh, Brace Deville said Lalana with the legendary winner against Norwich in extra time then jumping onto Klopp and breaking his glasses if my memory serves me correct mate yeah that was a that was a belter of a game that one great show uh, even Elijah John 5 was coming in and saying, yeah, crazy game at Carrow Road. Definitely. I'm just really excited that we're getting football back, ladies and gents, this weekend. Uh, Liam Kelly over on Hot Mike said, Dejan is obviously a very limited centre-back, but having him as a fourth choice who isn't always pressing the start is quite rare. Uh, his friendship with Mo could also impact the squad. No doubt. I mean, I cannot argue with Eileen that he's very good friends with Mohamed Salah. Gets the coffees in all the time like a good lad as well. Um, the thing about Lovren is, I think he does want more football. And I will never hold anything against the player that wants to move on for game time. Footballers' careers are relatively short. Even if we're looking at them for maybe a best-case scenario, 15 years, say, as a professional footballer. Um, so as much with Simon Mignolet when he wanted to move on for game time as well. If Dejan sits down with Jurgen Klopp and they have an honest conversation and Klopp says, look, you are our fourth-choice centre-back as things stand. My first pair are Virgil van Dijk and Joe Gomez and then Joel Matip is our backup. Maybe Degsy and Jurgen Klopp will come to an agreement that it is best for him to move on. Um, I see a few people in the chat suggesting Nathan Ake as a backup. I mean, I love it. I'd be all over that if I'm being honest with you. Um, him being a Dutch international as well, obviously playing with Virgil van Dijk there. I mean, I'll take it, yeah. I see a few comments for it. I, I haven't seen links, really, if I'm being honest, but it's a good shout. I mean, I know you guys know your football, so absolute belter of a shout, that one. Um, if he gets the coffees in, keep them said Red for life. He definitely gets the coffees in, coffees in May for sure. I've seen so many videos of uh of Degsy coming to Mo with the coffees, and you gotta love that. I mean, I wish there was one of my mates bringing me cups of coffee every day. Uh, it's also been reported that Victor Oshiman, I believe is how you pronounce the name, has been linked with a move away from Lille this summer and is thought that he'd prefer a move to England over Italy. Uh, he's been linked with a number of Premier League clubs, including the Reds, as well as both Milan clubs and some other clubs over in Italy. Not one that I know much about, if I'm being honest. Haven't seen much of Lille. Um, I think a couple of people if you a couple of people in the chat has mentioned them to me before, but I gotta put my hands up and say I don't know much about them whatsoever, nor 
have I genuinely seen a link with him to us? So again, I'll hand it over to you guys to see what you think. Uh, Charlie Minchin said, what about Soyuncu? Leicester won't sell him, mate. I mean, he, he was their replacement for Harry Maguire and... Um, Nah, I just can't see that one happening. I mean, it would take an astronomical amount of money and, and less there aren't a club that will need to sell and they'd be looking ahead to hopefully Champions League football for them next season. Uh, so, no, I can't see that one happening. Uh, what have we got? Brian Morrissey said, The link to R would suggest an expectation that Genie and Yaldam is leaving, which I believe he is, said Brian. Uh, Lalana and Genie leaving means a big hole for just Curtis Jones to fill. And look, I've said time and time again, Curtis Jones, I have no doubt, will be a baller at this club and one that will push on and have a great career here. Um, Brian has been very honest and I admire him for his honesty and he's always said to me behind the scenes as well that he believes that Genie Wijnaldum will move on. Um, I hope that he doesn't. I hope and I, I very I don't like to disagree with Brian, but like I mean I'm not saying Brian wants him to leave, but Brian is very strong in his belief of what he has been told. Um I hope Jeannie stays. I hope Michael Edwards sit down and we get that contract sorted out. But if Jeannie does move on, then Husimoir is a very, very good um, adequate player to come in and, and take over from from Genie and a player that will probably be a bit more on the front foot. Although Genie can, as we know, we've seen him with the Dutch squad play more on the front foot. He did it at Newcastle as well. Um, yeah, look, it's a difficult conversation to have, Brian. But you know, we're adults on here, and and we try and uh, take everything at face value. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's an. I'd love to know what other people have to think about what Brian has said there. Uh, Dugout said will you be doing any watch alongs for the Bundesliga yes mate absolutely. fucking lutely you can call us the Bundesliga agenda until the Premier League gets back I mean um, for sure going to be doing as many watch alongs as I can which is why I keep saying to people download the Hot Mic app because that is the best app to watch uh, our watch alongs on because the beautiful sync button so if you haven't used Hot Mic before or if you've used it during this, this lockdown and you haven't been able to to use it for its real function, which is commentary of games, you're in for a treat when the Bundesliga comes back because we will be broadcasting games, of course. We will be doing our commentary on them. And when you download that Hot Mic app, the first thing that you're going to be asked to do is to put in your welcome code or were you given a referral code. That code is Anfield, as you see on the screen there now, all capital letters. Then you'll be prompted to give us a follow on there as well if you've used that code. Please do that. Next thing, you'll go through and you'll see a list of upcoming events. So at the weekend, let's say on Saturday, we're doing a game in the Bundesliga. Click on that game. Then you'll see the list of people who are broadcasting the game. I hope you choose us and go on and click on Field Agenda. That, then what will happen is a big roundy button will appear on the screen of your phone or on your tablet. And that button is a sync button. S-Y-N-C, sync. You hit that button and it listens to your television and it knows the point in the commentary or in the game that you specifically in your own home are at. And it then adjusts air match commentary to you so it's perfectly in sync with how you're watching the game. You then lower down your television and air commentary will play through either your mobile phone, your tablet, your Bluetooth speakers or whatever your choice is. Even the chat gets delayed for you so your live chat is up to date. No spoilers of goals that go in or anything like that. And with the Premier League looking like it's going to come back next month as well, what a better time to download that Hot Mic app. And as I said, it is free to download. It is free to use. There's no ads on it. It is beautiful. There's not even many trolls on it at this point because it's so new. So please do download that app. You've got ourselves on there. Um, you've got the Anfield app on there. Red Men are on there. Um, Claude and the Bansters are on there. Lee Chappie's on there. Lee Gunner's on there. Somebody else who I can't announce yet is about to come on there as well. And some more big, big, big YouTubers and broadcasters coming along the way as well. If you're not just a fan of football, if you're a fan of NFL, if you're a fan of, of ice hockey, if you're a fan of any sport, UFC, boxing, whatever, Hot Mike is the app because it allows you to get fan commentary the way it's supposed to be delivered instead of a, a Martin Tyler-esque <laughs> bias, bullshit, boring, nah. 
let's 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 just go hot mics the way get the Anfield agenda. I mean, I probably just ruined any chance ever of working on Sky Television, but fuck it, I don't care. I'm a fan, and I want you guys to uh, enjoy our fan content. So again, download the hot mic app, and we will of course be on YouTube as well. Uh, so please, if you are enjoying the stream, hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Uh, Dave Sweeney said, hot my Craig, listen listen to Craig Colin, lover in a cabbage. Uh, yeah, guilty, did do it, can't lie. Uh, if Liverpool were offered Rashford, would you take him? Said Anfield Agenda fan Ryan. Well, firstly, mate, belter of a name, thank you. Uh, would I take Rashford? I rate Rashford, let me put it that way. I suppose, Ryan, let me start off with that. I do rate Rashford. Um, I suppose it would defend on the money. I mean, I prefer Werner, if I'm being bluntly honest. But, um, yeah, I take Werner over Rashford. But I do rate Marcus Rashford as a player, I have to say. I know I'm supposed to, you know, sit here and say he's shit because he's a United player. But I always try to give my honest opinion. And I think Rashford's a decent young player. I really do. So, um, I wouldn't mind him. But I prefer a team of Werner, if I'm being honest. Uh, a couple of people think he's overhyped. Alex Crawford, guitarist, said, any news on Genie? Nope. Absolutely nothing, mate. Nothing that I've seen anyway. Um, we're going to have to wait and see with the Genie Wijnaldum situation. What else has there been? Oh, yeah, actually, interestingly, Riyad Mahrez had come out and said that Liverpool had expressed an interest in signing him prior to us going out and signing Mohamed Salah from Roma. And he's a great player and one that certainly would have done well here. Uh, but the club, in my humble opinion, definitely made the right decision, even pushing aside the fact that we got Mo for... Was it like 34 million? Something like that. And Mahrez cost 60 million from Leicester. Um, Mahrez is a great player, don't get me wrong. Interesting to hear that he was um, being pursued by the club at one point. But I think we'll all agree the right decision was made by, by Klopp, by Michael Edwards and the recruitment team to go out there and get Mohamed Salah instead of Riyad Mahrez. Um, I think we'll all agree on that one. And still, nod to Mahrez. is a very good player though. Uh, Joel Morris, thank you for the super chat, mate. I think it's the first super chat of the night, and then you've just retracted your own question. I mean, thank you for the super chat, mate, but if you do have a question, please do bang it in. I promise you I'll try my best to uh, to read it out, especially now that you've sent the super chat. Mares went to get a big paycheck to sit on City's bench, said Seamus Moore. He's starting to work his way into the side a little bit more, though, Seamus. Um, Liverpool, you'll never walk alone, said King Mo was the right decision. Uh, Red for Life over on Hot Mike said, I take Rashford, we could get the most out of him. I, I like the way this is, I, I like the way we have different opinions on here, but, you know, we could do it in a respectful manner. I like that about our chat. Cater uh, or Oxlade Chamberlain could replace Genie when Yaldum, said Seamus Moore. I'm keeping an eye out for Joel just in case he does put that uh, comment in because he did super chat and I like to try and read out every super chat that we get. So you retracted your own comment, mate. So I, I don't know what to say. Uh, any truth in the end on Bele rumour, said Casper, no. I mean, ask yourself this, Casper. One, why would Spurs go and pay, was it 50-something or nearly 60 million quid for the record signing and then loan him out to a Premier League rival? Um, we don't need him is another reason. I, I think him and Mourinho, if my looking at this from the outside is correct, don't seem to be getting on. Um, but nah, no, it would be a no for me anyway, mate. And I think the rumours are complete nonsense, to be fair. Uh, Carl Kent host Kent I keep getting this wrong mate don't I Kent Coastal Holiday Let's thank you for the super chat mate said good night everybody and stay safe and mate love to yourself and Julie and of course all your staff at Kent Coastal Holiday Let's I hope you're keeping well um Craig will I take Anthony Marshall at Liverpool said Joel Morris um no hmm I'm going to say no, but again, respectfully, because I'm not going to sit here and say he's a shit player. Um, yeah, no, I'd say no at this moment in time. I think I would rather we went out and signed other targets. But um, would you, Joel, would you take Anthony Martial at Liverpool? Or would any of the chat take Anthony Martial at Liverpool? Uh, Liam Kelly over on Hot Mike said, thoughts on the Vignetta rumours? Genuinely, Liam, and I don't mean to be dismissive, mate, but I haven't seen them. I haven't seen anything about Bignetta and Liverpool. Um, yeah, nothing at all. I know there was talk, I think, that um, wasn't he tied with 
Mbappe for the golden boot in France and they gave to Mbappe for, I don't know, maybe more assists or something, I don't know, but Mbappe wanted to share it. I think that's the only thing I've seen about uh, Bignetter that I've seen recently anyway. Uh, Jake Simister said, will Werner come? Jake, my belief, and it is just my opinion, mate, is yes, I do think we will get Timo Werner. I think the club are right to look at the current financial climate, see how things go, see how the restart of the Premier League happens, uh, see what the financial situation is. There is a little bit of talk that maybe the 60 million euro buyout clause that we'd heard about isn't quite right. Somebody had come out, and I can't remember which newspaper it was. I do want to give credit, but I can't remember. Suggested that maybe his bio clause could be as low as 50 million euro if Leipzig don't win the Bundesliga this season. So, you know, if there's one man that can go in there and get a deal done, that is Michael Edwards. So, um, I think it might take a bit longer than we would have wanted. But my humble opinion is that, yes, we will sign Timo Werner. But please don't base that or think that I have any inside information because I, I don't. It is just a fan's opinion, that's all. Uh, who will win a title quicker? United, Spurs or Arsenal? That's a really good question again from Ryan. Um, I don't see any of them winning a title in the near future. But I think United are best placed to build on what they have. Both from a financial perspective and... Um, if they can put a director of football in place, I don't know what Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's long-term future will be. You know, it's not my place to say. If I had to pick from those three, I would probably go with United. Um, but I don't see any of the three win a title in the next three to five years, if I'm being blatantly honest. I think it'll be between Liverpool and Manchester City for the foreseeable. Um, and I, I mean... From my point of view, that's a good thing to say because it means we're doing something right. So, yeah, but honest opinion, I, I think of those three, I would I would lean towards United, but it'll be a while. Uh, I take shame as Coleman. What about yourself? Said Red for life. Uh, no, love him from an Irish perspective, obviously. True gentleman, but nah, I, w- I, would, uh, I would pass. I think, you know, again, bargain an absolute bargain for Everton when they got him and oh my god what a player they did get but yeah no not at this moment in time uh, Luke Wilson said love you Craig you're my second favourite ball person uh, thank you for the compliment mate but why second who the fuck's more ballier than I that you love more Luke I mean come on mate number one surely mate number one with a bullet come on right more stuff to get through uh, so former red and all around top bloke John Aldridge wrote an article in The Echo and I wanted to just read a section of it to you guys. He said, you can't just do away with relegation as far as I'm concerned when three quarters of the season has been played and the bottom line is it all comes down to money. They're worried about missing out on next year's television cash and it seems that they'd be happy to pay back part of this year's chunk to guarantee themselves a slice of next year's. I can understand how desperate they are because we're talking big sums of money here and they'll be frightened if they go down this season. They go into free fall and be relegated again and again down to the third tier which we've seen happen with clubs like Sunderland and Leicester and Southampton in the not too distant past. Uh, But they feel they need to be careful what they wish for because there's already been some talk of the bigger clubs getting a larger slice of TV money and possibly even negotiating their own TV deals. And that full article is available to read over on the Echo website if you want to read it in its entirety. It's a very good read. And of course, anything that John Aldridge has to say, I'm always willing to listen to. But again, full disclosure, it is available on the Echo's website if you want to go over there and have a full read. Uh, Thomas McGee said, I'm driving or you're drinking a Diet Chav. I have got one right here mate i mean i think the other day was the first stream i did or i didn't have one uh joel morris thank you for the super chat buddy said do you think liverpool could be in for Jaden sancho oh i would like to say yes joel um i think united are going to make a big 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 play for Jaden sancho both in terms of wages and and what maybe bruce or dortmund would look for um, if I'm advising Sancho, if, if I'm his agent, I'm going to say, mate, another season with Dortmund to do you no harm. I mean, the way that the football climate is right now, go stay at Dortmund for another season. You'll be playing Champions League football. You'll be playing with some really good players there. 
Um, yeah, I just don't see the rush. I, w- I would tell him if I was advised him to hang on for another season, but I do think he'll move this summer, and I think most likely he'll end up at Manchester United, if I'm being honest, but I, I wouldn't mind him at Liverpool in the sliders, mate. Not at all. Uh, Jake said, do you think it's right we put staff on furlough for about £2 million, but then pay £50 million for Werner? Look, I've, I've been very open and honest about this, Jake. I think that decision to furlough staff was a fucking disgrace. Nothing short of a disgrace. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, all, I'm happy to give FSG all the props for all the good stuff that they do, but I'm not afraid to call them out on their bullshit, mate, and that was bullshit of the highest order. Um, they've run the club magnificently, and I'm, I'm very thankful for what they've done, but it's a disgrace. It goes against the ethos of our fucking club you'll never walk alone the city of liverpool what it's about it's socialist roots nah for me mate it was a massive 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 gaff and the decision to make a u-turn on it was done for one thing and one thing only and that was because of bad pr i don't buy into any of this bullshit that they suddenly realize that oh we made the wrong decision. We, we had a rethink. Fuck off. Be honest about it. You were called out in your bullshit. Every Liverpool fan worth their salt said that it was absolute nonsense. And that we would rather not have... I'd rather not sign any players. And make sure that those staff receive their full wages. Because we can afford to do it. We're a club that's in a, a lucky position. That we can afford to do it. So Jake, I think it was a shocking, shocking decision mate. Um, and I don't know a Liverpool fan that, that thinks it was right. Um, but the fifty million for Werner thing, I don't think you necessarily can compare the two because one was was a decision that was made. I don't think purely because we couldn't afford it. I think it was just, I think it was a shit house thing to do. I'm going to be honest about it. I think it was a shit house decision to make. Um, yeah. I mean that's all I have to say, and I'll give you my honest opinion. See the the beauty about our channel is. And this is the same, I think, with the United stand and, and a couple of other fan channels is I'm not withholding or beholden to the fucking football club. I'm a fan and I will give my honest, unbiased opinion about Liverpool. Well, sometimes biased, but my honest opinion about Liverpool Football Club. And I'm not just going to blow smoke up their ass. If I think Liverpool Football Club are fucked up, I'm going to call them on it. And that's what the beauty of fan channels is. I'm not withholding to the club. I don't give a fuck about getting access to Jurgen Klopp or any of the club's players. I am here to talk to fellow Liverpool fans about the club that we all love. And I couldn't give a rat's ass if I never got any access to the club. Because if I was to do that, I would just become an extension of the club's media. And for me, I'm a fan. And I want to be able to share my opinions and speak honestly and openly. And call them on their bullshit. And I think... That's what we said from day one is is what we're about. We are a fan channel with our own views, our own opinions that we won't be shy about saying. It, and I, I'm often giving them props because they've done loads of great things. But again, I'm not afraid to call them on their bullshit either. Uh, what have we got? Don't know where their heads were in the PR machine, said Joanne Fisher with regards to that. Uh, hello to Colin Mackett here over on Hot Mike as well. Uh, Ireland win the World Cup or Liverpool win the treble mate Liverpool to win the treble I'm sorry I'm going to be greedy about it from that perspective I mean Ireland winning a World Cup would let's be honest Colin probably cause no work to be done in this country for three months mate because there would be one big ass party I mean I'm old enough to remember Italia 90 and the massive impact that that had uh, on Ireland in a positive way Um, but I'm, i got to go to treble mate i got to go to treble I'm, I'm sorry I know that that's probably wrong, but I'm going with this rebel. Uh, Rob said, well said, Craig. And look, that's my opinion. I'm not here to be a mouthpiece for Liverpool Football Club. I'm here to give a fan's view. 99% of the time, my views are going to be positive because how could they not be? How could they not be right now? Um, Liverpool Football Club are top of the league. Champions of Europe, although we've been knocked out. Reign of World Club Cup champions. We've got good owners, a new stand, a great manager, an amazing squad. There's a lot to be thankful for. And we're in a very forced position that there are only small things here or there that we need to critique. And look, when we see these blatant errors, we'll, we'll call them. And we'll say it like grown-ass people. Although I like to throw in a bit of bad language now and again because that's kind of my way, isn't it, really? 
Uh, Jack Grealish to replace Wijnaldum, said Casper. I can't see it happening, if I'm being honest, Casper. Um, who do you reckon we're signing, said A. Thorrington. Werner. Werner is the only one I would say, mate, with any confidence. Um, Uars is one that I'm hearing mixed things. And when I say hearing, this time I can actually say it because... We had James Pierce on and I was talking to, to James about it. And then I'd read a piece from, I think, David Maddock that said we were tracking Hussein Moir at one point. But Mr. Maddock believed that because of the current financial situation, he didn't think Liverpool were going to do any business. Now, of course, that could be fluid and change as we go on. But um, that's the only one I'd be confident of, mate, if I'm being honest. Is there anything else that I have missed out on in my notes? No, I think I've gone through all of my notes. Nice. Uh, Craig, do you think we can get Madison? No, nope, we missed that boat, mate. We had a chance to sign him when he was at Norwich. Uh, we were interested, from what I believe. Uh, he had an ankle injury at the time. I don't know if that had any difference to us not pulling the trigger and, and going for Madison or not, but Leicester did. They got themselves a good player, and I think he'll remain at Leicester for, for the foreseeable anyway. And, and like I was talking about earlier on with Jaden Sancho, Madison's young enough that if you want to say bigger moves, I mean, I think it's a bit disrespectful to Leicester, but there could be big, big, big moves down the line for him. And he's in no rush. He's in a good place right now with a manager that likes to develop young players, a club that looks like they could be playing Champions League football next season. So, yeah, no, I, I, I would tell him to stay put if I was uh, his rep. Right, what else is there? Uh, do you think Mina Mina will get a chance if Werner comes? Yes, I think he'll get a chance regardless, mate. I mean, um... I've seen some people write off Takumi and um, it disgusts me if I'm being honest with it because uh, the chap has barely had time to settle before we've got to where we are in the world right now. So for me, I mean, a pre-season under his belt, the remainder of this season and we will see what Mr. Minamino has to deliver next season but I'm very much looking forward to it. Another absolute bargain from Michael Edwards, FSG, the recruitment team and the gaffer Um. But, you know, that release clause of, what was it, seven and a half million, something like that. Peanuts in this day and age for, for a player who looks very, very good indeed. And uh, one I'm looking forward to seeing develop at the club. Uh, Klopp said if he signs someone, he's not looking to replace. I, I'm, excuse my stupidity, Mr. RTG. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Um, as in he's not looking to bring in somebody. So let's say we signed Timo Werner. He's not looking to bring in Werner to replace one of the front threes. If that's where you're going with it, absolutely agree with you, mate. I mean, it's to add to what we have. We don't need to sell. I mean, there was even talk that um, that Sadio Mane could be getting an improved deal. Which, don't get me wrong, I've no problem with Sadio being here for the rest of his career. Because I love him. But himself, Mo and Bobby signed new deals recently enough. So... I can't see why the need, but look, I'm all for keeping Sadio Mane here. I mean, Sadio Mane, here the cop, i sing Mane. I love him. I fucking love Sadio. Yeah, so give him whatever he wants, basically. Uh, what is it? My dad's a Coventry fan, so I've been following Madison since his breakthrough. Sensational player, but he seems destined for Manchester United, said Liam Kelly over on Hot Mike. Thank you for that, mate. I really do appreciate the insight. It's always nice to uh, to know that you know you you've you know more about the player than I do. Clearly, mate, and your dad being a Coventry fan would have seen him break through. So well in on that one. Uh, Fabio said Jurgen Klopp, a brilliant manager. He's done everything with your amazing club. Cannot disagree with that, Fabio. We are blessed to have Jurgen Klopp as, as manager of this club. Um, and him to sign that contract extension as well. It's a thing of beauty. Klopp 2024. I'm all over it, mate. I love it. And there's nobody in the world I would rather have right now. Manage a Liverpool football club. How many Liverpool games have I been to? This is a question I get asked a lot. And every time I'm asked it, I'm wondering. Is it a genuine question? Or is it a question from somebody who's trying to build up to your fucking armchair fan? Um, I've been to over 50 Liverpool games, mate. I've been to two European finals. Um, yeah, I've been to my fair share. I was supposed to be at the Villa game in April, but hey, but what happened, obviously, that was cancelled. Um, but yeah, no, mate, I've been over 50 is the honest answer. But um, 
Yeah, I mean, I'm always wary of that question because it can quickly be followed up with a fucking armchair fan, which, you know, drives me mental when people have that kind of attitude. Not saying that you were. Uh, Craig, how would you feel if we missed out on Werner, said Shay. Lovely to see you in, by the way, Shay. I hope you're well, mate. Um, pissed off. I'm not going to lie, Shay. Very, very, very annoyed. Particularly if it, was, if it was a window where we did no business. Because last window, or last summer, was a quiet window for us. We brought in young talent. Uh, Harvey Elliott, Sepp Vandenberg. And, you know, we didn't spend too much money. So, I understood that. I mean, I mean, fair play. And, uh, look, this season we've gone out and we, we've absolutely walk through the league so yeah I, I can't i can't see us going another summer i can't see nike coming in as well by the way and not getting at least one new sign in to help push the shirt sales and all because we are in a position now where we can say well shirt sales do help it used to be that people thought you brought a player in shirt sales would, would help pay for the player as well it used to be no not really because clubs used to just get what's called a merchant's cut there were some clubs that had you know different deals, but with the Nike deal, we know that it seems to be Liverpool guaranteed somewhere around thirty million, and then twenty percent of all Liverpool Nike merchandise that the club sell. So a new player in, a load of team of Werner shirts getting flogged, it actually can help to pay for the player. So um, I'd be, I'd be fuming. I'm not gonna lie. If we did no business this summer, I'd be fuming. Uh, a couple of people asking about the chair, where it came from. It comes from a wonderful company called Serendipity Furniture. You can find them on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Um, I think Paul and Beth prefer if you catch them on their Facebook page, if my memory serves me correct. But yes, it comes from a brilliant company called Serendipity Furniture. It even has the, the liver bird and my surname embroidered into the chair. It is real. Some people think it's a, it's a prop. It's a real chair that I was uh, fortunate enough to get. And um, yeah, love it. It's going to be in my house till, uh, till my dying days, probably. I love it that much. There's a link from John Hamilton, the absolute legend. Look, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to start to bring this stream to a close. Um, I really do appreciate all your time, your love and support, as always. If you've enjoyed the stream, please do hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to download the Hot Mic app. You can see the sign-up code there on the screen. I want us to try and get towards 2,000 followers on there before the season comes to an end, but we need your love and support to do it. Again, our next stream will probably be, I would say Wednesday. I mean, make sure you've got your notifications turned on on both Hot Mike and on YouTube. But I would say we're probably talking Wednesday. And um, then hopefully we have the Jan Agafjortov interview coming up on Thursday. And then we'll work towards the weekend, the Bundesliga coming back as well. But look, as always, thank you for your time, for your love, for your support. To everyone that sent in Super Chats. I really appreciate it. All these little things make such a difference to a small channel like ours. Um, if you want to become a member, it's only 99p a month. Hit that join button. You get use of all those cool emojis that Liverpool YNWA just put on the screen right there now. And um, yeah, again, it really helps us out. But look, most importantly, stay safe. Look after your loved ones. And as I always say, up the motherfucking reds. I love you crazy bastards and bitches and, and everyone that watches um, your support means the world to us. And a shout out to Connor as well. Shout out to my boy Connor, the other half of Anfield Agenda. And um, the reason you haven't seen him active lately is because he is just about to hand in all of his stuff, his thesis and everything for his degree. Today is the last day. And after today, Connor will be on his way to getting that degree later on down the line. He's about to submit everything to his tutors right now. So from all of us, and I know I speak for all of us. Lots of love to Connor, and no doubt that he'll knock it out of the park. He's a very intelligent young man, and this channel would not exist without Connor Crosby and all of his hard work as well. So, from me and my family, lots of love to Connor as well, but he knows that. Look, ladies and gents, I will talk to you soon. Take care of your family, tell your loved ones that you love them, and up the motherfucking Reds. Love to you all. <laughs>